Hi and welcome to another Class 47P to review and in this video we are going back to model railway stuff well, train stuff actually after two reviews of reviewing cars I'm now back on the railway stuff but we're here with something a little different today because we are here with the Your Model Railway Village issue series now, originally I did not plan to buy this because seeing it in videos and advertising on the telly it didn't feel that exciting however I decided to buy one of these and give it a shot to see how good it is well to see if it is good and all that you know what I mean and if it is good I may subscribe to it so far it actually does look pretty cool Considering the usual price would be £8.99, it is instead four quid. So you can't complain. And you'll also notice I am reviewing in a reviewing reviewing sorry in a different part today. I'm actually reviewing on a black and decker workmate effect. I can't say if this is going to be permanent, but hopefully it should be, because it is going to be much better than kneeling down on the floor like last time. Okay, so Here's the massive card that you get with the first of every of these issue series magazines and in fact it has actually got well it is actually quite heavy surprisingly enough and on the back you get all this stuff bring the age of steam to life well that is an instatement because that is not entirely true but basically it says here, create your own detailed 1960s English country village and relieve the nostalgic of steam. Again, not entirely true. With this fantastic new series. Yeah, I love the fact that they say fantastic new series. Which is a bit of manipulation. To try and string people along to think this is fantastic so they collect it. But it could turn out crap. With each issue, collect all you need to make your village of Little Benton. Hmm... Of all names, why did they choose Little Benton? It just doesn't work. I'm sorry. And then you get a little box here that says, In your magazine, in big joint writing, build your railway. All about model railways. Yeah. British in the age of steam. History of Britain's railways. And you get this little thing here that tells you what's coming in issue two. Which is step-by-step -step instructions to start station assembly which comes with curved and straight piece of track and walls and other parts for your station hmm. and of course they've got the website at the bottom but interestingly you get some small print which says not all items shown are included in the collection some appear as projects in the magazine Items may vary from those shown, layout complete in 120 issues. Pictures not to scale. Now, that is actually quite tongue in cheek to say. Because naturally, people will think you'll get everything with it when you don't. Which begs the question if you don't get everything with it, then what else are they going to slap in, in these 120 issues? Hmm. And it's going to cost something like. 1074 but you know it's basically OL gauge 176 scale 4mm to 1 foot yeah and you get some other information about your collection and these are available in all news agents I got this one today from WH Smith and apparently you can get them from shops like Asda and Tesco I hear. It's a shame Morrisons don't sell them because I could have got this or this from the local Morrisons that lives not too far away from me. But anyway, we'll make a start. I think we'll start on the book first. Like that. Okay, so coming soon. Ok, 
Okay, well, this packaging is not entirely brilliant. So I'll stick that in the bin. Okay, so we'll look at this later. Okay, so here is a track mat. Which is quite surprising. In fact, is this a full track mat? Hmm, it doesn't seem to be. So, maybe you get separate track mats then. But you know, if that's the case then, why? Because Hornby don't do that. So, I'll just put that over there to stop it falling on the floor again. So you know, why do these guys feel the need to do that? So, here is the magazine itself. And oh god, to get all this rubbish. Make sure you don't miss out. Don't worry, we won't. Yeah. Quite useless. And then get all this stuff about subscribing. Special subscription offer. Plus free, superb, free gifts. Well, I wouldn't go that far saying they are superb. But, you know. And it always tells you about what you get free. Only 5 pounds basically 6 quid. Hmm. So, here's some of the free gifts in the next issues. Um, the first free gift you get is the Forge and Tractor Diecast Model and Farm Trailer. With your first delivery. And also with your first delivery you get a modeler's kit. In the second delivery you get a blinder and dividers. Which you can keep all these <laughs> magazines in there. And with your fourth delivery you get a five plank mineral wagon for free. Exclusive for subscribers. Interesting. And it's interestingly enough, there's another bit of it on the back. Not entirely sure why. But, you know. But, what do you get with your 5th and 6th and 7th issues? Because it doesn't even mention them. And I love how it says on the top here, plus all these items will be yours. If you decide to subscribe, of course. Well, that's interesting. The lights in the background are flashing on and off. Hmm. And then here's the part where you can subscribe to them. Three easy ways to order. Send no money now. What? <laughs> that is a little bit confusing. Because if you don't send any money, how are you supposed to subscribe? But, you know... Yeah. So that's basically that. There's nothing interesting about it. And then you get this. God, there's so much stuff that they mention about subscribing. Essential cork underlay. Which is a special offer that's free. Or will they do something stupid and say that this is for free, but when you get it, that you get a little pamphlet where they offer you to buy it. Something that Atlas Editions do. So you know, these guys might try the same thing. Okay, so here's the magazine. Issue one, but to get holes free, hole punched into the side. Oh, sorry for knocking the camera then. So inside, I love the fact how they start it off talking about the straight track, and it also mentions as well about the carriage, which apparently is the first piece of rolling stock for this series. That means I'm assuming you'll get more later on. Which ones? I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, so it basically starts off what comes with this issue to start with. Not exactly amazing, is it? And then here's a little bit about the passenger carriage. 
which is the type used in the 1960s and it's a Mark 1 passenger corridor carriage and then here's the little info saying welcome to little Benton again that you know why choose that name in particular not the best name and it just doesn't feel like a name you would give to a station not a real one anyway I know this isn't a real thing but you know come on little Benton and so it basically talks about the you know the whole layout with your village plan there and then it starts to get a little bit more interesting life in the 1960s 1963 was a critical year for the railways as modernization led to the decline in steam locomotives not entirely true because 1968 was supposed to be when all the steam locomotives died out well you know what I mean when they finally switched to these ones. Then here's a little bit about cars as well. Like style on the road. The girls get dates. Yeah, pretty much like how it is now. And I'm sure in the other years they were still getting dated. So yeah. The Triumph Herald dozens. Which is actually a cool car. I suppose. Then it talks about the fun at the movies. I don't really see how that is exactly amazing because I'm not really interested in the movies. And then advertising everything, yeah. A trip down memory lane is next. With a picture of an LMS Patriot class. Which apparently, in this little caption here, is a perfect portrait of the 1950s. Hang on, I thought this was supposed to be about the 1960s. <laughs> that bit doesn't make any sense. And then there's all this other junk here. Although I, I do admit, I do actually like this painting here. It is actually on display in the National Railway Museum. I'm sure I've seen something similar there before. And it's basically a portrait of Waterloo Station in 1967. And you get several EMUs. There's an M7 tank up the corner there, as you can just about see, and a Class 73 in the background over there. And there's a few Bully Pacifics as well, the rebuilt ones. Sorry about that then, I got interrupted. So anyway, so this is a nice painting. Railway Anna, I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't know and I don't really care. And this piece as well is quite interesting. Just about. And then you get some more information here. Such as the unrebuilt Battle of Britain classes locomotives built by Oliver Bullard, known as spam cannons. Although it doesn't actually really tell you about them, just a little bit about them. Which is a shame. Speeding on. Okay. And Brookwood Necropolis Railway. which was promoting funerals apparently so there was basically a railway in the cemetery interesting I didn't know they used trains to carry dead bodies really weird from nationalisation to modernisation well railways aren't really that modern and especially all these poor attempts that people try to modernise the railways such as HS2 which I don't really like the idea of, but that's just me. Why I don't like the idea of it? Well, that's me. You know, but do we also need that? <laughs> Let me think. No. Oh, God, well, one floor of notice with this magazine. Just look at that. You know, these aren't very well put together, am they? They could have chosen staples or something stronger. We have a nice picture of Evening Star there at York Station. Which apparently, well, it looks like it's taken in the 80s.
But it also talks about Evening Star in 1960 being the last steam locomotive to be built, which is true. It would be nice for them to say when this photo was taken. I think it was taken in the 80s. And you get a little bit of information about the BR Cycling Lion logo there as well. And it talks about the end of World War II as well. I'm not sure why. Then there's this interesting piece. Now you can see here, yeah, it's basically broke now. Well, it does mention a little bit about Stanley Blackfires being one of the most successful locomotives. And I love the fact they've put, did you know, on the side of it. Yes, we all knew. And this is basically one of Grizzly's locomotives on the Locomotive Exchange Charles of 1948. Which is interesting, because this particular one is, it seems to read Lord Farrington. Though, you know, I thought the only A4 that went on the 1948 exchange trials was Mallard, which it did on the southern region. So they've probably got the wrong information on here. Because I don't recall Lord Farrington going on any locomotive exchange trials. Then again, maybe it did. And there's a little bit about train spotting there. And of course, this bit's broke off. And a little bit about retired trains as well, in which many of them went to Die Wooden Scrapyard, also known as Barry Island, in South Wales, where many locomotives from GWR to Eden Southern Region were taken there await their fate, but surprisingly, none of them, or not many of them, got cut up. All of them were sold to preservation groups, every single one of them, so that's pretty good. Probably because they didn't find the time to cut them all up. Of course, that didn't happen with every scrapyard, sadly, but, you know, we can't really complain about that now, can we? Then there's a little bit about the road and rail as well and beating in charge. Yep. Not that we really want to know about him. Because I don't really care. So that's the magazine. In my opinion, I think it is a rather poor design. Not very put together well. So before I forget, we'll have a look at this. Which I trust will not fall apart, and if it does, that will be annoying. Coming soon. In issue 2 you get the parts to the station. In issue 3 you get station roof doors and windows and straight track. Right. And then in issue 4 you get a level crossing with straight track. Not too bad. So you get a nice photo on the front there. So it basically starts off by talking about in your magazine and build your model railway and all about model railways. We all know about that. It talks a little bit about the story of British railways. It's basically what's in the magazine really. And when you open it all up, it basically shows you this. Which again, the photo is quite nice, but, you know. Then there's a little bit here about <coughs> where we have to apparently look out for special offers. Which includes the Batman OO gauge, Fowler Class 3F Ginty, plus electrics and speed control for your layouts. Coming soon. When, I would like to know. But, you know, I am actually a little sceptical about how they're going to do this. Why? I will tell you. If you just fold it like that. I basically already have a Batman 3 FA Legenti. Which you've all seen by now, and here it is. And I am more than happy to have this one. And as you can see, I have added a real coal load in its bunker. 
and you'll know about that if you've seen the how-to video on adding real coal into locomotive bunkers. But yeah, I am really happy with this one. In fact, I'm more than happy to have this one. But I am a little sceptical about this special offer on a Batman Jinty, because how are they going to work it? I mean, is it going to be free, or do you have to pay for it? It doesn't say. And also, very interestingly, it has no number on the side of the bunker, but it does have one on the front. Now, why did they remove that one on the side, and not that one? Did they remove it for copyright reasons or something? Because on the television advert, and as you can see on this photo here, it basically shows you no number on the front or the side. Which I can't understand why. But then also, it gets a little bit more confusing, because this one has the early emblem on the side. The one in the television advert and on this photograph on the front of this book here shows it with a light crest. So I'm quite confused. What are they going to show us next week? Are they going to show us a Ginty in LMS Maroon livery or something? You know, it's it's all very confusing really. So, there's a bit of dust on the top there, I have to brush it off later. So I am really confused how they're going to work this so-called special offer. But also, why did they choose a 3F Ginty? Because Ginties actually never ran on branch lines. They were shunting locomotives. And these were eventually replaced with the Class 08s. So I am a little sceptical of how they're going to do this whole special offer on the Batman Ginty. But you know, they could have chosen other locomotives. Such as, I don't know, a Prairie Tank or a Pannier, but we can't complain about that. But yeah, we'll have to look out for that. So, that's the end of the magazines. Now we'll come on to the Coach and the Piece of Straight Track. I know it's taken me this long to get to it. But you know, I thought it would be best to save this till last. And of course, I did get interrupted a few times off camera. So, we'll put this giant card away. Because we won't need it. We'll bring the couch and the track into shot, and we'll also put these mag magazines away. Okay. So, let's get this open. Now, the packaging is not entirely brilliant, but we'll have to let that go. Because what did you expect? A big foam box. Right, oh, not the camera again. There you go. It might not look like I've done anything, but I've made a tiny hole here. It must be noted, I have never really liked this packaging because it's not exactly easy to do. You know what, forget it. We'll leave it like that. At least for the track anyway, which we'll get out first. We might as well. So here is the track piece of track. Which has no manufacturer's name on it other than the fact it's made in China so maybe this is a piece of track they made themselves I don't know and I guess we'll never know but they have got some fish plates on these ends here which is good in a way and there's some nice detail to the sleepers to make them more wooden but you know it's just track at the end of the day there's not much to say about it just track 
So that's nice. Now we'll have a look at the couch. We'll just get rid of the packaging. Oh. Okay. How many of you have experienced that? A bogey dropping off. Very odd, but anyway, so it's fallen off again. Hmm, I just don't know if it's not broken. Ah, there we go. No, there's something wrong here. Give me a sec. Right, well, today is now the next day. To you it's going to seem like seconds, but trust me, it is the next day. When the video was first filmed, it was on Saturday. Today it is now Sunday. And that is because I spent nearly a whole day, being yesterday, mending this couch. Which was broken. Uh, the track is now gone because that got broke as well. Because I bossed it, it fell on the floor and accidentally trod on it. The magazine fell apart. In which, all that's left of it is this. And so they had to go into recycling. So while we're at it, we can get rid of that. You know, this whole magazine thing... It, I just haven't had much luck with it, which is a shame, because everyone else I've done videos on this have had nothing wrong with their couches. They've been perfect, but for everyone, it, for, well, for anyone it could have happened to, it had to be me. Everyone's got a great couch. I had the dud. The your the your model railway village issue series. It's just cheap. It's just got a cheap feel to it. This first issue for three ninety nine is going to be the only issue that's cheap. All future issues are going to cost somewhere like eight ninety nine, something like that. But it's just not worth it. It's just not worth the money. Not even worth four quid. You know because it's just not worth the money. You know there's not too many people outside the railway hobby that's going to buy this. But for those of them that are in it, most of them have probably already got layouts anyway, and so they're only going to really buy the rolling stock. People on YouTube have bought half a dozen of these. You know, the people that created this issue series in the first place, you know, build your own model railway village, they didn't think it through, did they? You know, they might as well have just had an issue series where you just collect rolling stock. Because, you know, I mean... What's to say that in all the next issues, no one's going to have any problems with all the other stuff you get? You know, what's going to happen next? The buildings, them parts that you fit together to make buildings, they could have problems as well. They could break. You know, what's going to happen next? Are we going to have buildings made of car, but we stick together with blue tack? Or the ginter that you get later on as a special offer? That might be a model, but it might not even have a motor. It might have a drawing of a motor. Or it might not even be an actual model. It might be one of them old wooden ornaments. But, you know, I mean, it's a shame because the coach body, it's actually quite good. But the chassis isn't. It's these two pegs that are the problem. There are two very small, pointless holes at the end of the clips, either side. And as you can see, I have glued them. And I have managed to fix it. I was worried I wouldn't be able to, because then otherwise I would have been stuck with a couch that wouldn't be any good to me. So these can still turn. 
as you can see. But you know, whoever designed this, they didn't use their brain. Because it's them little holes that are the culprit, nothing else. I'm told that this is one of Hornby's new 2013 range coaches that have not been released yet, but I don't think so. I can't see Hornby ahead of release putting these in this magazine series. I just can't see it happening. I reckon someone's taken the tooling off them and cheapified it a bit, if that's what you want to call it. Because it doesn't have the it doesn't have a Hornby quality feel to it. At least it doesn't with the bogies anyway. You know, it it just has a cheap feel to it. It's not the Hornby Railroad range, in my opinion, that's for sure. But, you know, it's, I got this because I said to start with that, that this didn't work with me. But I got this because I wanted to see if it would change my mind and see if it was good for myself. But obviously, an act of God coming, he must have been looking down. I mean, thinking, ah, oh, right, he doesn't like that magazine series. But wait, he wants to buy one of these himself. We'll show him who's boss. We'll give him a dud coach, a broken one. I'm just glad I'm not even going to continue this because I'm not going to have anything to do with this magazine series anymore after this. Because the next issue I'll get, there'll probably be a gun in the next issue. And it automatically shoots at me. And puts a bullet wound in my arm or something. <laughs> but you know, I can't see these lasting long. For anyone who hasn't had any problems with them, I guarantee that they'll start falling apart. Or maybe, to those of you thinking they're getting this, the same problem could happen. It's just not really worth 3 99 So I'm going to mark it down. I'm going to give it 2 out of 5. I want to go lower, I want to go 1 out of 5, but actually no, I'll go 1 out of 5. Seems a bit fair, right? because it's just not really worth it. It's cheap, there's hardly any build quality to it, and it's just lacking something. And it's a waste of money really at the end of the day, because let's face it, how many people are going to be buying these? Considering there's 120 issues, that when you've collected the entire thing, it'll cost something like... 1074, I can't see many people buying them, so I can't see this magazine series lasting long. You know. And some people are thinking, <coughs> oh, shut up, it only costed 3.99. Well, even if it costed 3.99, we still expect the items that you get with the magazine to be in tip top condition, not broken. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, it has just annoyed me, but I'm just thankful I've fixed it, because this will now look really nice with my maroon coaches. And what I will do in this video, I will get this running with my other maroon coaches with the Ginty pulling it. Which is a really good idea. Well, in my opinion, it is anyway, but... You know, if this is one of Hornby's new coaches, which I don't think it is, they've got to be really careful, because if it is, they'll start falling apart probably, and then they might have to start bringing out spares. But to be honest with you, I don't think it is Hornby. I mean, it could be. I could be wrong. Unless someone states that, then do so, if you know, of course. And then if that is the case, this would be my first 2013 range product from anyone. But, for now, I am sceptical about it. Because, well... Here's a Hornby Railroad Range Pullman coach that originally had a silver roof, but in order to match my other ones, I painted it white, which looks a bit better. But look at the bogies. Look. Yeah, there are these little holes here. But they don't really affect the clips. They are not at the sides here. Which this sort of thing here is actually better. In fact, why couldn't the people that designed this coach go for the same idea with the bogies? Because then we wouldn't have the problem. Not to mention, the wheels on this coach, they are entirely plastic.
as you can see. Although I haven't said that, they do have metal axles. This coach has the opposite, metal wheels, but plastic axle boxes. And I can't see Hornby doing anything like that. So, don't take it as ignorance, because, well, I just don't see how it's Hornby's design. Unless someone states otherwise, then do so, but, you know. I mean, the bogies, these are much better on here. Not to mention it's got Hornby's manufacturing name printed on the bottom. This coach does not. So, surely that is some evidence that this is not a Hornby coach. But anyway, rant over, we'll have a look at the coach. So, despite what I've said, it is still nice. The detail on the bogs is very nice. The metal wheels of the plastic axle boxes, they are a little bit pointless, really. If it had working lights, I'd understand, but since it doesn't have working lights, but then what would you expect for $3.99, then it is a little bit pointless. The buffers, they're not sprung, but again, what do you expect? But there are NEM sockets. Which I'm not going to remove the coupling, but they are NEM, as you can see. The underframe detail, I have to say, is really nice. You've got some detailing down here. These boxes at the bottom. These boxes at the bottom, that sounds really funny, doesn't it? The corridor gangways are moulded really nice, as well as the extra detail in here. I mean, it might be basic, but it's there. And you've got, you do get doors with handles on them, as you can see. And you get these toilet doors as well. Well, I'm assuming that's the toilet doors. That could be where the, well... It's not going to be where the guard is, so that's got to be where the toilets are. It doesn't say if it's male or females, though. <laughs> but then they didn't in real life, anyway. The livery on the coach body is spot on, but it does lack a little emblem on both sides. But then, in fairness, in the 1960s, these maroon livery coaches didn't have the emblems on the side, anyway. So, that's not really a problem. But there is some nice glazing in the coach windows, with seats going inside. So I will give it that, and also, there is actually a nice bit of weight in this, so it's not too light. The roof, however, hmm, well, people say the roof detail is wrong. Well, it's not, because you get all these bumps at the top, like it's supposed to, and these lines on the top. Though I am a little sceptical about that weird shiny texture on them, though, but we'll let that go. And the detail at the top here, yeah, it's basic, but you could always improve it somehow if you're determined enough. Or you could even weather the roof, rust it up, or put <laughs> pigeon droppings on the top. Whatever you want to do with it, it's up to you. Although, the roof colour, it is wrong. And I will show you. Here's a maroon coach that was made by mainline models in somewhere in the 60s or the 70s. They've long been deceased. But, you can see the difference in the colours of the roof. This one is the right colour, darker shade of grey, where this one it's lighter. And that is a problem, because this is going to stand out a mile with my other maroon couches. So, what I might do is I might paint this roof the right colour. I'm sure I've got some grey paint that's going to be the right shade to match this one. But they, also, but they have also painted the inside gangways there. As you can see, which is nice. And there is actually emblems on the side here as well. But we'll let that go on the other coach. The emblems, you know. I suppose this roof colour is the third problem I have with the coaches. The metal wheels, they are a bit pointless. The bogies, definitely, but also the roof colour. Well, despite what I've said, it's still alright. But now we'll put this on the tracks. To show it running.
with the Gen 2. Right, the maroon couches are on the track already. Now we'll get the new one on. I just only hope it goes around the bends. There we go. Now, look at how nice that looks, regardless of the roof colour and the bogies and the plastic axles with metal wheels. But that looks really nice. Now, the gint on the rails, off camera at least, we back it up to the maroon couches and now we get her going. Fingers crossed. Oh, it's left that part of the rails like a scolding cat there. Right, well, so far it's running smoothly. Here comes the first bend. Passing the seaside, which has nearly been put in, so the windmill has been put in a different location. Yes, it's got round the first bend. Dirty trap there, that'll have to be taken care of soon. Here's the next bend. Yes, it's got around that perfectly fine. So what can we say about it? Well, it's still alright. When you get a good one, that is. But I'm just glad it's fixed now. <laughs>